Welcome back, fight fans, to another video here on The Fight Game. Tyson Fury's participation in the sport of boxing has always been a bit of a wild card. His next move is often unpredictable, and that makes the story of Tyson Fury one of the most interesting of them all. Under the disciplinary tutelage of his father, John Fury, and previously the highly knowledgeable Peter Fury, along with Ben Davison and currently Sugar Hill, he's managed to become the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, held every world title in boxing, and dethroned Deontay Wilder. It's not that he dethroned Wilder, it's how he did it, by way of stoppage. No questions, no doubt. Tyson Fury is the king among kings. On February 22nd of this year, we saw a 273-pound, 6'9 reckoning. No doubt, Tyson Fury showed us what he is all about. Before that, Fury became the lineal heavyweight champion by ending Klitschko's 11-year reign. And right now, he stands with an undefeated record of 30 wins. But just how good is Tyson Fury? That kind of question is always tricky to tackle. If Fury was in a different era, would he even be a champion? Or would there be even less of a challenge? With so many intricacies involved, the answer will always be subjective. Welcome to this video here on The Fight Game, where we take a look at Tyson Fury and question just how good he is. To do this, we compel ourselves to a series of categories. Power, speed, intelligence, and laudability. In each category, I give my own personal ranking out of 10, with 10 being exceptional, 5 being average, and 0 being poor. You are more than welcome to give your own ranking of Tyson Fury in the comments section below. We begin with power. Tyson Fury isn't known for knockout power, but there's no way Tyson Fury's punches are soft. Any man who weighs more than 270 pounds is going to hit hard. Fury has more wins by knockout than he does by decision, but even still, in the grand scheme of things, we don't often see a knockout artist when we look at Tyson Fury. However, if we looked at Canelo Alvarez, we'd probably say yes, Canelo hits hard. But Tyson Fury actually has a higher knockout percentage ratio than Canelo. Perhaps Fury hits harder than what most people like to give credit for. Another thing we have to mention is Fury's mentality going into fights. Fury often goes into a fight with the intention of outboxing his opponent. This was no truer than his duality against Deontay Wilder. When Fury entered the first fight, his intentions were to box. But when the second fight came along, his intentions were to knock Wilder out. The first fight ended in a draw. The second fight ended in a stoppage for Tyson Fury. So that begs the question, if Tyson Fury had entered every fight with the mentality to knock his opponent out, would we today be talking about Tyson Fury as a knockout artist? So as far as power goes, I think it's fair to say he hits reasonably hard, at least when he wants to. He doesn't hit as hard as Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder though. I give Tyson Fury's power a ranking of 7.5 out of 10. Next up, speed. When it comes to speed, Fury's got it in abundance. He's very fast, but not only that, it's his sheer size that makes his speed a wonder to the fans. For a man of that size to move in that way is an athletic freak of nature. So speed, yes, Fury's got plenty of it. Fury is very sharp both physically and mentally in the ring. The communication that his skills display in tandem with his mind makes Fury a once-in-a-generation type fighter. He's much faster than Wilder, he's much faster than Joshua, and he's got better footwork than both of them too. Perhaps the only man that really challenges Fury's speed and footwork is Usyk. I give Fury a ranking of 9.5 out of 10 for speed. Ultimately, we move on to intelligence. Intelligence is no doubt Tyson Fury's forte. Ring intelligence, the ability to find and create situations in the ring to support a victory, is something Fury epitomizes. I could easily talk for ages about Fury's ring intelligence, but the video would likely be too long. But there's still plenty we can highlight without going into too much detail. 
I will break Tyson Fury's intelligence into three parts. Physical awareness, ring awareness, and situational awareness. Let's take a look at physical awareness, which can be defined as one's ability to understand their own body. After Fury beat Klitschko, he went up in weight to over 400 pounds and suffered with depression, which has already been documented extensively, so I won't talk too much about it. You'll see a lot of boxers gain weight in retirement, and this is no doubt due to the fact that they've been making weight with strict diets all their lives. However, to come back down into fight shape takes some serious dedication, and that's what Fury did. With the help of trainer Ben Davison, Fury managed to lose around 150 pounds for his comeback and title fight against Deontay Wilder. Then, in the rematch against Wilder, Fury decided not to enter the same weight as he did in the first fight. Instead, he gained 17 pounds and was able to push Wilder back with ease. Not only this, but he retained his fitness and improved his strength with weight gain. To vary your weight to coincide with the way in which you wish to perform requires a good understanding of your own body. The lighter weight was optimal for outboxing Wilder, and the heavier weight was optimal for walking down Wilder, which was what happened in both cases. Some other examples of physical awareness include Canelo, when he moved up from 160 to 175 pounds to fight Kovalev, while retaining fitness and improving strength. An example of weak physical awareness would include Wilder, who gained too much weight for the rematch and in turn was slow and sluggish. Next up, we have ring awareness. It's no doubt that Fury's fundamentals reside in his boxing skills. One component of Fury's ring intelligence is rhythmic deception. Watch Fury here. He extends his left arm to measure Wilder up, he jumps back, resulting in Wilder relaxing, then Fury capitalizes and comes back in with a straight 1-2, then finishes Wilder off to win the fight. Fury also utilizes vision obfuscation. He uses his lead hand to occupy the vision of his opponent. He leaves his left hand extended, covering his opponent's eyes, and from this, he can change his positioning or let go of an attack. Fury also likes to flick his jab to trigger an opening from his opponent. We've also seen this from other boxers such as Canelo Alvarez. Fury's feints channel his herky-jerky style. He moves in unpredictable directions, making him difficult to time. He often throws combinations off of feints. The deceptive use of feints is the artistry of intelligent boxing. Lastly, we have situational awareness. I'm going to show but one example of Fury's intelligence outside the ring. Watch this. In the post-fight press conference of the Wilder rematch, Fury was brought a bottle of water by trainer Andy Lee. Fury asked who gave him the bottle, and since Fury did not recognize who it was from, he denied the water bottle. This is such a simple action on the surface, but if you haven't guessed already, he denied the water just in case someone put something in his drink to make him fail a drug test. Even after one of the biggest nights of his career, Tyson Fury was focused as ever. I give Tyson Fury's intelligence ranking an exceptional 10 out of 10. Lastly, we have laudability. Laudability is defined as how worthy Fury is of praise when considering other factors we haven't mentioned yet. Let's take a look at some accomplishments that come into play when evaluating Tyson Fury's caliber. He's undefeated. That tells you all you need to know about his standing. He's yet to meet the man to beat him. He can be knocked down, bruised, but Tyson Fury has always found a way to win. He's also the lineal champion. The lineal title can be tricky to understand in boxing. The lineal title is a concept among fans of the sport to articulate the man at the top of the chain of the heavyweight command. 
A lineal champion comes from a passing of the torch event where the lineal champion loses to an opponent, or when a new lineage is established after a previous lineal champion has been retired for some time. Some great boxers who held the lineal title include the likes of Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, Joe Frazier, Floyd Patterson, Azar Charles, and Jack Dempsey. There are boxers who have retired as the lineal champion and never passed the title on. Lennox Lewis is the lineal champion from the 2001 to 2004 lineage, Rocky Marciano is the lineal champion from the 1952 to 1956 lineage, Gene Tunney is the lineal champion from the 1926 to 1928 lineage. Since he beats Klitschko, who was the lineal champion from 2009, Tyson Fury is now the reigning lineal champion from 2015 to present. Not only that, but he has showed remarkable dedication to training, coming from being 150 pounds overweight, crawling out of depression, to come back and dethrone the so-called baddest man on the planet. A man's got to be made from a certain material to achieve such a feat like that. It's one of the greatest comebacks in sports. However, there are two things missing from Fury's career, to become undisputed and to make a title defense. Therefore, I give Fury's laudability a ranking of 9 out of 10. So therefore, I have Fury's fighter ranking at an overall 9 out of 10. Close to exceptional, but not quite there yet. Of course, if Fury was to successfully defend his title against Joshua, and consequently become an undisputed champion, perhaps we should then revisit these rankings. So what do you guys think? How do you rank Tyson Fury as a fighter? Do you disagree with these rankings? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider giving it a like as it helps us grow the channel. We'll see you in the next video here on The Fight Game.